One specific area I would like to highlight uh, is uh, particularly on the, um, in terms of what we're bringing. Yeah, for example, in, our, in the Green Innovation Centers project, we have developed um, a game, a, a gender game, which uh, really focuses on communicating gender-based constraints and how they can be addressed. And that game, uh, so far, we've uh, been trying uh, to, to promote it and um, get as many views from people as possible in order to kind of feed into the concept of how a final kind of game will look like because we are currently at the trial phase. Yeah, the value added that I have uh, gotten here is, is really making this people-to-people -people connections that make it easy for, for one to be able to do, to take follow-up action. And I have um, so far shared, for example, um, our work around the Better Life book, which is the book that we have uh, developed in collaboration with our, um, our partner, our implementing partner in, in, in Zambia, Community Markets for Conservation, in short, Komako. Uh, so this book is a collection of different farmer practices focusing on production, but all the way until marketing and also touching on different topics like uh, cross-cutting topics like health, for example, um, like uh, land management, soil health improvement. So this knowledge has been packaged in one tool, which is quite useful and has proven successful in Zambia. And I shared that in one of the parallel sessions and uh, colleagues found it interesting. And um, what was coming out particularly was that um, there's so much knowledge that is being developed, but it's not being packaged. And many colleagues appreciated that approach and asked a lot of questions, what process we took to develop that particular book. And um, we shared that and uh, I feel proud that we were able to do that. When we talk about transforming food systems, I think uh, there's so much talk about focusing on, the, on, on, uh, on climate issues, environmental uh, sustainability, which is good. But I think what is even more important is the issue of um, crop diversification. So I think in most countries, they, they, um, they are, there's a lot of, um, in the context of Africa, this, the concept of staple food, where you find that people are concentrated on one uh, kind of crop, which is like the staple food. If it's rice, it's rice. Everyone is just eating rice. If it's in the context of Zambia and Malawi, for example, which I'm very familiar with, it's um, maize, this nshima, which is the, 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 the main uh, staple that is eaten. And so there's so much pressure on these crops such that there is intensification, there's intensive use of fertilizers on these crops, and everyone wants to grow more in an unsustainable way. And so there's just pressure. So why can't we diversify our diets, introduce more... Uh, different diets, uh, diversify our diet uh, options. And in the long run, I think that is going to transform our food systems in such a way that we're not only going to be um, uh, doing one thing in, and, and putting the same kind of uh, chemicals into the ground, but also bring in different crops, like, for example, more groundnuts, more soya beans, lentils. And at the end of the day, we put back more nutrients into the soil, but also make sure that we have a diversified diet and also reduce pressure on single crop kind of, single cropping kind of system. In the example of Zambia, for example, we have the price of millimule now going so high such that there's so much pressure and everyone is, is having this pressure. And uh, what about rice? What about cassava? What about all the other crops? Why can't we uh, fall back on those crops? And moreover, maize was only introduced into the country. It wasn't like sort of an indigenous kind of like crop, you know? It was just introduced into the country. So going back into more indigenous foods, diversifying the diets, I think it's going to help in reducing the food insecurity that we are seeing uh, on the continent.